Hi, I'm Joshua Habu Koo, and this is a short introduction to my paper for the 2016 Minds Online Conference, which is entitled Knowledge How, Abilities and Questions. Before I get into the paper, I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank the organisers of this conference for organising such a brilliant and innovative conference, and uh, to thank the commentators for their really helpful sets of comments. I'm really looking forward to discussing these issues much more in the week of the conference. So, I want to start out by setting out a puzzle about knowledge, how, which I think is at the heart of the contemporary debate. The puzzle is that the most important kinds of evidence about the nature of knowledge how point to diametrically opposed of what accounts of what knowledge how is. On the one hand, there is a strong folk intuition that knowledge how is a distinctively practical kind of knowledge, which is closely connected to skills and abilities. On the other hand, as Jason Stanley and Timothy Williamson have pointed out, evidence from linguistics strongly suggests that knowledge how ascriptions pick out states which are relations to propositions. The puzzle is this. These two kinds of evidence point towards rather different accounts of knowledge how. On the one hand, the folk epistemic intuition seems to suggest that knowledge how is a distinctive kind of knowledge to be set apart from other kinds, including propositional knowledge. Whereas linguistics seems to suggest that knowledge how is just another kind of propositional knowledge. So my goal in this paper is to try and resolve this puzzle by developing a novel account of knowledge how, which claims that knowing how to do something is a certain kind of ability to answer the question of how to do it. The view I'm going to call the interrogative capacity view. I'm going to claim that it's a key virtue of this view that it can explain both the folk intuition that knowledge how is a distinctly practical kind of knowledge and is compatible with the evidence from linguistics. The plan of action is this. In the first section, I'm going to set up the, the current an intellectualist and anti-intellectualist accounts of knowledge how and explain how they respond to the central puzzle. And I'm going to argue that neither account is in a position to adequately resolve it. In the second section, I'm going to open up the possibility of a compromise position between intellectualism and anti-intellectualism, which I'm going to call the interrogative capacity view. Uh, and then in the third section, I'm going to develop this view. Before in the fourth section, setting out some positive features of this view concerning its ability to resolve the puzzle and to explain the connections between knowledge how, knowledge that, and abilities. Let's start out by setting out where the debates are, what the views are, and how they get motivated. So I take it there are two central families of views in the knowledge how debate. On the one hand, there are intellectualist views which take knowledge how to be a certain kind of propositional knowledge about how to engage in various activities. On this view, knowing how to swim is just knowledge of a certain kind of proposition about swimming. On the other hand, there are anti-intellectualist views, which take knowing how to do something to be some kind of ability. The standard view here is that knowing how is just the ability to do, meaning that knowing how to swim, for example, is just being able to swim. Now, the intellectualist view standardly gets going by appealing to linguistic evidence. Intellectualists appeal to the idea that we can understand what knowledge how is by understanding the semantics of the sentences which are used to ascribe it. In particular, they think we can understand what the object of knowledge how is by understanding what the grammatical object of knowledge how ascriptions is. In standard knowledge how ascriptions in English, the grammatical object of this kind of ascription is an interrogative phrase of the form how to the view. Now it's standard in semantics to think that this kind of interrogative phrase denotes a question, much as we think that declarative phrases denote propositions, and that a question is equivalent to a set of propositions, standardly those which are possible answers to that question. If this is right, then an interrogative phrase like how to v denotes a set of propositions which are its possible answers. With that idea in place, it then looks very plausible that what it is to know a question is just to know the proposition which correctly answers it. Now this means that knowledge how comes out as knowledge of a certain kind of proposition which answers the question of how to be, a certain kind of way proposition. And this gives us an account of knowledge how which treats it as just a kind of proposition knowledge. Now, one theme in the anti-intellectualist fight back to this view is to appeal to the distinctive practicality of knowledge how, with the idea being that knowledge how is practical in a way that other kinds of knowledge are not. 
There are three key ideas in this debate. Firstly, there's the idea which we find in Ryle that knowing how is exercised directly in action, rather than via some intermediate act of contemplation. Secondly, there is the idea that there's some close connection between knowledge how and intentional action, which is often expressed by the idea that knowledge how is necessary for intentional action. And finally, there's the idea that knowledge how is a distinctive kind of flexible disposition, which adapts to the needs of the situation, producing an open-ended set of performances. Now, there's a short argument from these kinds of conditions to the idea that knowledge has a capability. The idea comes in two parts. First, we can observe that other species of propositional knowledge do not seem to have the relevant kinds of practical properties, making intellectualism seem like a somewhat risky bet. Now, the positive suggestion is that abilities to act do have these relevant properties, directness, necessity, and flexibility. Since they're exercised directly in a range of actions, and uh, in a certain sense necessary for intentional action. So the idea is that abilities do have the relevant kinds of properties to be identified with this distinctively practical kind of knowledge how. So we've seen two kinds of views and how they are each motivated by appeal to one of the two kinds of evidence that we saw in the initial puzzle. So where should we look for a solution to this puzzle? I think that one really natural place to look is for a compromise position between intellectualism and anti-intellectualism, which can combine the virtues of both. The key to the kind of compromise that I'm interested in is a certain kind of talking past one another, which happens in the debate between intellectualism and anti-intellectualism. On the one hand, intellectualists are super interested in the semantics of the complement of knowledge how descriptions, or to put it another way, in the question of what the object of knowledge how is. On the other hand, anti-intellectualists are centrally concerned with the nature of the knowledge how relation in particular with the claim that knowledge how is a certain kind of ability. Now the key thing to notice here, the diagnosis of the confusion, is that these two sides are focusing on different debates, different kinds of questions. There's one kind of question about what knowledge how is knowledge of, and another kind of question about what kind of properties the knowledge how relation has. So this opens up the space for a compromise. We might ask whether we can combine the intellectualist thesis about the object of knowledge how with the anti-intellectualist thesis about the knowledge how relation. So the question is, what would kind of this kind of view look like? So I think, in general, this con the kind of compromise position would take knowledge how to consist in a kind of abilitative relation to propositions, or in other words, an ability to answer a question. I want to defend one such view in this paper, which takes knowledge how to be a certain kind of ability to answer a question or equivalently, uh, capacity to generate propositional knowledge. Now there's a number of different views which identify knowledge how with different kinds of abilities, but I'm gonna use the tag interrogative capacity view to pick out the distinctive kind of ability to answer a question that I'm interested in. Let's get going and try and develop this insight into an account of knowledge how. One initial kind of problem faced by this view is that there are lots of different kinds of capacities which relate to questions. There are capacities to answer questions in German, to answer questions in explicit terms in language, or to write questions down. Now none of these capacities it seems like it's plausibly identified with knowledge how, it just doesn't seem to have the relevant kind of properties. So the challenge, the kind of initial challenge for the supporter of the interrogative capacity view is to isolate a kind of capacity which is plausibly identified with knowledge how. I want to go about identifying this kind of distinctive kind of ability to answer a question in three parts by identifying three kinds of elements which I think are important to knowledge how. Firstly, I think in order to understand the flexibility of knowledge how, we should understand it to involve fine-grained how-to questions concerning how to act in rather specific kinds of circumstances. Rather than identifying knowledge how with a rather general piece of propositional knowledge, as the intellectualist does, this view identifies knowledge how with a capacity to generate a whole body of fine-grained propositional knowledge. Secondly, I think it's plausible that we should understand knowledge how to be a, distinct, a capacity that's distinctively tied to practical situations. This means that the kinds of capacity to answer a question that one needs to be in is one to produce answers to a question in practical circumstances, rather than, say, in the classroom or in the street. 
Thirdly, if we want to identify knowledge how with a kind of interrogative capacity, I think we're also going to need to, need to respect the idea that there's a distinctive kind of answering involved too. I want to develop this idea by claiming that the relevant kind of capacity is one to generate propositional knowledge on the fly. Rather than generating a piece of propositional knowledge at the beginning of action and then employing that knowledge to guide action, I think that the relevant kind of capacity which is involved in knowledge how involves answering parts of the question piecemeal while in the process of acting. Now, this notion is a kind of placeholder notion, and I say a bit more about what answering a question on the fly is in the paper version. Now, with these three ideas in place, we're in a position to formulate the interrogative capacity view in a set of necessary and sufficient conditions. So the view that's formulated is this, that S knows how to V for some subject and verb, F and only if for some contextually relevant class of practical situations, S has the capacity to generate fine-grained answers to the question how to V in that situation whilst in the process of acting. So at this point in the paper, I've argued that it's possible to hold a compromise position between intellectualist and anti-intellectualist views, and I've somewhat filled in the details of this view. However, it remains to be shown why this view is an attractive one. Now, I think there are two key positive features of this view. Firstly, that it can resolve the tension between linguistics and the practicality of knowledge how, and secondly, that it can explain the connections between knowledge how, knowing that, and abilities. Let's take the puzzle first. To recall, the puzzle that was that linguistics and the intuition that knowledge how is distinctively practical seem to point towards different accounts of knowledge how. Now, I think that the interrogative capacity view is compatible with both kinds of evidence. On the one hand, this kind of account is completely compatible with the standard semantics for knowledge how descriptions. Notice that on this kind of account, knowledge how is a kind of abilitative relation to a question, which means that this kind of account is compatible with the result that knowledge how is a relation to a question. Now, this is the key result that we got from the semantics. On this kind of account, one can take the standard semantics for interrogatives and just claim that knowledge how is a distinctively practical kind of relation to a question. On the other hand, I think this kind of account can also explain the practicality of knowledge how. Here there are three features to explain, directness, necessity, and flexibility. I think all of these kinds of features can be explained by the kind of interrogative capacity which I filled in in the previous section. Firstly, an ability to answer questions on the fly is exercised directly in action, since the process of answering is tied to action and is flexible, producing different pieces of propositional knowledge to meet the needs of the situation. This means that you can explain both flexibility and directness. Furthermore, if we think of intentional action as a kind of answering a practical question, then it's plausible that the standard case of intentional action will involve the exercise of ability to answer practical questions. And this idea will explain the idea that knowledge how is a necessary condition for intentional action. The idea being if acting intentionally is answering a practical question, then the standard case will be the exercise of knowledge how, since knowledge how is the capacity to answer practical questions. Another nice feature of this view is that it predicts that knowledge how is closely connected to both abilities and propositional knowledge. This, I think, is a positive feature of the view, since it's becoming common ground in this debate, that in many cases, knowledge how is associated with both a body of propositional knowledge and with a certain kind of ability to act. So firstly, the interrogative capacity view predicts that knowledge how will produce propositional knowledge, since the exercise of the capacity to answer a how-to question will produce knowledge of the relevant answer to that how-to question. I think there's another kind of connection between knowledge how and knowledge that, which can be involved in this picture too. So I think certain kinds of interrogative capacities can plausibly be grounded in propositional knowledge. For example, we might think that the ability to generate answers to the question of how to put one's socks on might be grounded in a piece of propositional knowledge about that task. Now this view also predicts that knowledge how is connected with abilities. Since answering a question on the fly involves actually acting, an ability to answer a question on the fly will correspondingly require an ability to act. So there's two nice features of this view. It can resolve the tension between our folk epistemic commitments and the linguistics for knowledge how descriptions, and it can explain the connections between 
these three states of knowledge how, propositional knowledge, and the ability to act. So, to sum up, I sketched out a compromise position between intellectualism and anti-intellectualism, and argued that it's an attractive compromise. I've called this view the interoperative capacity view, and argued that on this view, we can identify knowledge how with the capacity to answer how-to questions on the fly. This kind of view has two key positive features. It can resolve the tension between the linguistic evidence and the practicality of knowledge how, and it can explain the, the connections between knowledge how, knowledge that, and the ability to act. So, thanks for listening, and thanks to the organisers for hosting these videos.